the Wyoming Cowboys enter a new era with Craig Bull departing. And when you look at what this team has to look forward to, there's still plenty of talent. There is definitely a lot to be excited for. And Jeff Savell has a lot of returning talent to utilize in 2024. While Andrew Peasley does not return at quarterback, they do get running back Harrison Whaley back after a year in which he nearly rushed for 1,000 yards. 947 yards and five touchdowns. The former Northern Illinois transfer was a great fit for the Cowboys offense. And again, this is a group that is going to look a little bit different. We'll see what Savell sees in terms of what he can do to change things up. I don't think that he wants to be the same coach as Craig Bull. I don't think that that's a wise decision on his part. It's better off for him to do his own thing and make his own impact on the offense. The offense could use a little bit of improvement. You can't just rely on running the football. But when you look at the talent they have returning, that probably is going to still be a focus. He'd like to see the passing attack that finished 118th improve, but it's going to be hard when Harrison Whaley runs the ball so well. Again, this offense has a lot of exciting players. It's just a matter of finding what's going to work best for this team, and it's not going to be an overnight process, but you can at least get things started and find a way to maybe balance things out a little bit better. Shea Suyanoa was one of those players that flew under the radar coming into 2023, but he did not waste time making people know who he was. Everyone was focused on Easton Gibbs, the, the defensive line, and Suyanoa took a, an opportunity and ran with it. 93 tackles last year, five and a half tackles for loss. Now, granted, Easton Gibbs still led the team in tackles, but it was Suyanoa that actually stood out to me. Had a big-time impact on a defense that needed another linebacker to step up, and a lot of that had to do with the front line doing its part, but the linebackers were a really talented group, and he is one of those players. This is a defense that was a tough group to beat. When you look at what they did last year, this defense was fun, and they return a ton of talent that's going to make them a really tough group, and Sabell obviously played a role in that last year, and now he's the head coach. So he expects the defense to continue doing what it does best. And Sui Anoa is now the leader with Easton Gibbs off to the NFL. Behind him, Wyatt Eckler is another player that recorded 77 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. So we already have you already have the the top three tacklers from this team that we just talked about. Gibbs obviously off to the NFL, and the other two guys are coming back this year. The defensive backfield was a solid group. You could see a little bit of struggles at times, uh, but you're looking at a group that is going to be much better in 2024. Savell, uh, this is his his group. This is his position group. And, and Eckler is one of those players that is a veteran, comes back to a group that should be really good. And even if the offense struggles, we know that the defense can at least step up and keep things steady until the offense gets things figured out. Somehow Jordan Birch and Holly is back in college football another year for the veteran and that's huge for him and huge for wyoming six foot four 290 pounds a player who is familiar with this system familiar with how to play the game at a high level and he is back for one more season 60 tackles for loss five and a half 60 tackles five and a half tackles for loss two sacks again this guy is a good player to have because even if he's not going to have the most productive season you're going to see a player who will get guys in the right position he's going to make plays where he's going to eat up blocks and open things up for the players behind him and you'd like to see this group continue to be disruptive this was a group that was extremely disruptive in 2023 and even though Burton Lolly isn't going to have the most tackles for loss and the most sacks he's going to be a big contributor to why this group will be disruptive in 2024. The offensive line, like I mentioned before, is going to play a huge role in finding balance. Jack Walsh had a big year, was an all-conference selection, according to College Football Network, at the guard position. And if they're going to run the football again, the offensive line will play a huge role. Now, you lose a couple of players. Frank Crum's departure was inevitable. You knew that he was going pro. But fortunately for Wyoming, they have good talent returning. And Walsh is one of those guys that's going to help in that transition while the new quarterback gets things figured out and easily, like I said, is gone. So who's going to be the guy that steps up? Is it going to be Evan Sabota? We don't really know, 
but the offensive line is at least going to give them time to figure that out. Rook Brown had a huge year for the Cowboys secondary. Three interceptions last year, and that was first on the team. And he is a player who played in the nickel. Maybe you see him more at corner. We will see. This is a secondary that has plenty of talent. Savell knows what he has coming back, and a guy like Brown is going to play a huge role. A secondary with Eckler and Brown gives them two players that they can build a, a round in terms of having that foundation to utilize. And when you look at what this group has returning up front, it's easy to see why a Cowboys fan should still be excited even with Bull gone. Now, there were players that stepped up that we didn't expect coming into 2023. Sebastian Harsh is one of those players. We knew that this defensive line had plenty of talent, and Sebastian Harsh is someone who stepped up in a big way. Nine tackles for loss, three sacks. The room gets a little bit less crowded this year, so Harsh has the opportunity to post even better numbers. And if that is the case, this is going to be a better defense because if he's getting to the, to the ball carrier more, this is a group that didn't have a single player in double digits in tackles for loss or sacks, and Sebastian Harsh is one of those players that could make that happen. Flipping back to the offense side of the ball, West King is another guard who is an all-conference selection. At six foot five, 303 pounds gives them good size. Again, we know that this team wants to run the football. I'm not saying don't run the football. It's just nice if you can find a way to be more balanced. If you find a way to throw the football a little bit more efficiently, it's going to be because the offensive line is doing its part, keeping the offense in, in check and, and keeping it balanced. And if you're able to keep your quarterback upright and you're able to run the football efficiently, then you're going to see an improved offense and still one that's going to rely on the run. But at least this offensive line knows how to do that, but also give their quarterback time while he tries to figure out what this passing attack will look like this year. Devon Harris is back after a disappointing season for his standards, four tackles for loss, four sacks. You obviously were expecting bigger things from him. But again, this group was so deep that it's tough to compete and get what you did in, and what you saw from him in 2022. 2022, he had 20, or 13 tackles for loss and eight sacks. Repeating that was going to be tough. When you look at what Wyoming produced last year, they had a number of players that produced four or more tackles for loss. So it was almost race to the ball carrier, a race to the quarterback. So Harris is, I wouldn't say that you, you see a step back. You just saw a group that was deeper. And maybe they don't have as much depth as they did last year. So that means that Harris gets a better opportunity. But it's also the fact that teams knew what he could do. Last year or two years ago was his first year, his first breakout year, where teams weren't sure what he was capable of doing. Now they know that. Now they know what he's capable of. And now they have a game plan for him. How does he counter that after a disappointing season? If he can find a couple new tools in his, his toolbox, in his skill set, and I like what Devon Harris can do in 2024. And finally, the offense is going to have options in the passing attack. John Michael Gillenborg is one of those players that at the tight end position, a position that Wyoming, I think, will find ways to utilize a little bit more than they did last year. With Trayton Welsh gone, and Trayton Welsh finished fourth on, on the team last year in receiving yards, Gillenborg actually finished third on the team. 360 yards and three touchdowns, averaged nearly 16 yards per catch. One of the things with running the football so well is that your passing attack is going to have the opportunity to gash defenses, and you're going to have to find guys who can step up in a big way because your top two receivers are gone, your top two pass catchers are gone, and Gillenborg comes back as the leading returning receiver, and he, he is going to play a huge role both as a, a, a blocker in the run game, but also as a pass catcher. And then, like I said, if this passing attack finds some more balance, Wyoming is going to be a fun group to watch. This is a Mountain West conference that is going to be deep. It's a conference that features a number of talented teams. So there will be pressure on the defense to do its part. The offense also knows that they must step up in a big way. Under Savell, this is a team going through a culture change, and there are going to be new guys that step up. And if they can find a way to balance things out, if they can find a way to move on from Craig Bull, then Wyoming will be just fine. They will still be a tough team to beat, and the defense will be a good group, and the offense will once again rely on the run, complementing with the pass, and seeing what they can do with this new era.